Hey, people of the internet, welcome back to the Real Heroes podcast channel. Uh, this is Corey from the Real Heroes, and uh, today I want to try doing something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to do a review of some 4K Blu ray discs. And you may be asking yourself, this is a channel that usually reviews episodes of TV, um, theorizes on what's going on in the state of the world of uh, nerddom. Uh, but, you know, uh, one of the things and one of the reasons we started this channel and this podcast was uh, we all love going to the movies. And I probably love going to the movies more than anything else at this point in my life. Uh, and last year, that kind of got taken away and things were a little bit tough and couldn't go to the movies anymore. So I made the decision, since I was going to be bunkered down in my house uh, with my girlfriend here, that we were going to bring the movie theater to us. So um, we had a, an OLED TV we were already watching and you know enjoying our content on. Um, didn't really have the audio to, to back it up though. Had a, a pretty nice soundbar system, um, but decided it was time to, to make some upgrades, make some changes. So we went with a, a full SVS um, setup, which highly recommend their speakers if you, if you haven't heard of them. Um, they're great. It's a 5.2.2 setup, which means um, there are five speakers at ear height um, between the front sound stage and the rear satellites. Uh, there's one subwoofer behind the TV, one subwoofer in the opposing corner, uh, and then there are also two uh, elevation speakers that are about eight feet up uh, behind my television point straight down at our listening position so that way uh, they provide the the atmos the atmospheric um, and you know enveloping sounds that come along with some of these soundtracks so um, not not a cheap endeavor to get into definitely something that's a little bit pricey but uh, if you are a fan of enjoying movies and, and kind of bringing that theater experience home i definitely recommend doing it um, that being said you know that brings us into 4k blu-ray uh, and you know if you're going to spend all this money on really nice tv really nice speakers subwoofers so on and so forth uh, you want to probably make the investment back into physical media uh, i know i personally completely ditched physical media about three or four years ago. Uh, I think the last Blu-ray that I had bought before 2020 was uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, uh, back when that released, which I think was in early 2016. Um, and then I swore it off. I said, I'm just going to buy everything on iTunes or Vudu or uh, whatever platform is out there. Um, and that's what I did for a really long time. And I was pretty content with it um, until I bought all of these speakers and retrofitted my entire system. Uh, and a couple of friends said, man, you really got to start buying discs. And I said, I really don't want to. I, uh, they take up space. They're expensive. Um, and then someone said, just give it a shot. Um, so I bought a 4K Blu-ray player, bought a couple discs. And when I popped the first one in, uh, I was a changed man converted to being back on physical media after four years of, of leaving it. So um, main reasons why uh, the disc affords far less compression. So uh, you can very easily watch a lot of your favorite movies on Netflix or Disney Plus or Amazon Prime uh, or iTunes or Vudu if you purchase them. However, um, you are still pulling them down off of a server. And when you do that, the video and the audio are both getting severely compressed and the bit rate is considerably lower uh, than if you're using physical media. Physical media is on a either 60 gigabyte or 100 gigabyte disc, uh, sometimes a dual layered disc. So there's a ton of additional space for all of that data and everything that's preserved from the film to make it to your eyes and ears. So, um, you know, after popping in that first disc, like I said, I was full in. I think I've purchased 40 or 50 4K Blu-rays over the course of 2020 and now into 2021. Uh, and to start out, I wanted to review these two, Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. We are the Real Heroes podcast, so kind of makes sense to start out with a superhero movie. So um, two terrific films released in 2018 and 2019, uh, directed by Joe and Anthony Russo. Uh, which I believe it was their fourth Marvel movie. They had done uh, two Captain America movies, Winter Soldier and Civil War, before diving into the Avengers films. Um, and obviously, you've probably seen these movies before. Um, they're excellent. Uh, they are about as big and bold as it gets uh, for a comic book film. They are wrapping up 23 films worth of storytelling that spans from 2008 all the way until 2019. So uh, kind of goes without saying, 
they're pretty awesome. But um, to get into the, the video and the audio quality of them, uh, video quality is insane. Um, the movies were shot at 6.5K, um, you know, using IMAX cameras, so you are getting an extreme level of sharpness. Uh, however, that isn't to say you're not seeing the movie in 6.5K, uh, you're only seeing it in 4K, uh, and you're only really seeing it at an upscaled 4K. Um, the reason for that is that both of these films have what's called a 2K digital intermediate. Um, to do all the visual effects that are required for a movie like this, you think Iron Man suit, Spider Man suit, the Hulk, Thanos. Pretty much every shot in every one of these movies has a visual effect attached to it. Um, in order to make that happen, uh, the visual effects are done at 2K, uh, and the video is actually downscaled to 2K uh, to match that, and then they upscale it to 4K for the release. Um, however, you know, semantics out of the way. The films look amazing. It's the best you're ever going to see them. The colors are vibrant. Everything is tack sharp. Um, there's no banding, you know, any vertical lines or, or pixely noise in any low light scenes um, because the quality of the discs is very high. Um, so, you know, if you want to see Infinity War and Endgame in the, the closest to what the filmmakers intended and probably the best that you've seen it since seeing it in a movie theater, um, this is definitely the way, to borrow a line from The Mandalorian. Um, from an audio perspective, these are both encoded in Dolby Atmos. Uh, Dolby Atmos is a uh, 5.1.24, no, however many height speakers you have, uh, configuration. So it's going to give you a full sound stage at your listening position and ear height. It's also going to provide those atmospheric effects from the height speakers. Um, or in some cases, uh, a lot of folks have uh, speakers that attach to the top of their, their left and right channels that go straight up to the ceiling and reverberate that sound uh, back down to their listening position to kind of simulate a height speaker uh, if they don't have the means to mount a speaker high on the wall or directly in the ceiling. But, um, you know, that really, really comes into play in scenes like where uh, Thor uses the Bifrost to, to travel to Wakanda and save the day. Uh, when Thanos arrives to Wakanda, you know, you're getting stuff flying in and out all around you. The subwoofers are kicking. Um, it really feels like if you close your eyes for just a second, it feels like you're back at the movie theater, which is which is pretty stellar. Uh, and, you know, when you get into Endgame, <laughs> they're the base it gets used quite a bit. Um, you know, when, when Thanos rains fire, um, you know, to stop Wanda from tearing him apart, um, the height channels are kicking off, the subwoofer is booming. When, when Captain Marvel flies through and pulverizes his ship, these things are just going crazy. And it's, you know, um, when the, the multiple snaps happen, both in Infinity War and in Endgame, there's a huge amount of bass that comes through and it rattles the whole house. And it, um, it's just, it's awesome. And it's it's probably the best way, since these films won't be in theaters again anytime soon, um, to watch them. So um, I would definitely say, you know, if you can swing it, um, they are available anywhere. You know, they're on Disney+, Plus, they're on iTunes, they're on Vudu. Um, but if you can pick them up on, on 4K uh, Blu-ray, it is definitely worth the purchase. You can get them on a good sale sometimes. They go down to like $14.99 every once in a while. Um, so I definitely recommend, you know, checking Amazon, checking Best Buy to see uh, when you can get them at that price. And then take the plunge. I do not think you'll be disappointed. So um, that's going to wrap it up for this review of Infinity War and Endgame. Uh, if you like this, comment down below. Let me know, uh, are you still in physical media? Have you switched over fully to digital? Um, is there anything that the industry could do to bring you back into that? Um, definitely let us know. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that way you never miss anything from us. Uh, we are going to be coming back with more film theories, more industry talk, more movie reviews, TV reviews. Uh, we have a lot of stuff planned for 2021. Really excited about it. So uh, if you want to check us out on social media, we are on Twitter at Real Heroes Pod, Instagram Real Heroes Podcast. And if you have any questions for us or would like to be on the show, uh, you can also email in at realheroespodcast at gmail.com. So till the next video, see ya.